Hey guys, how's it going? Best Rugby here. And the Cardiff Blues head coach has come out and said that Willis Halaholo has intentions to play for Wales at international level. Now, the current residency is all about that three-year rule. You must live in the country for three years, playing for a team for three years, and then you are eligible to play. This means that Halaholo would be eligible to play after the World Cup in 2019. Today, we're going to talk about should he be allowed to play for Wales, or what would he bring to the team if he did play, and do I think he would be a good fit? Let's do this. So the current rule, as I said, is three years. That's going to change to five years in 2020. So Halaholo has realised this and is clearly making his intentions obvious that he wants to play for Wales. This would mean that he's eligible to play for Wales just after the Rugby World Cup in 2019. Now, he joined the Cardiff Blues in 2016 from the Hurricanes after winning the Super Rugby title, and that was the first time that the Hurricanes managed to win it. Born in New Zealand and has now lived in Wales for two years, but obviously next year it will be three years. Last season he played very well for the Cardiff Blues, and his style of play is quite simple. He's an attacking centre. He wants to run with the ball. He has great footwork, we know that. And his game against Munster last week was world class. But the question remains, doesn't it, about what is being Welsh? How do you define what is Welsh? And is three years long enough? And World Rugby have maybe noticed that it's not long enough and have increased it to five years. And what will Halaholo bring to Wales that maybe the current centres that we have won't have? So let's have a look at our current centres. We currently have Jonathan Davis, who is a great attacking centre, came back for the Scarlets last week. He's got 13 tries for Wales so far. Scott Williams, 12 tries in 57 games. Not so much a start, but coming off the bench, it's a fantastic option. Owen Watkins, a young Welsh-born centre, would Halaholo coming into the squad stop his development and stop him being able to play for Wales? It's a question we have to ask. And Hadley Parks, one who of course was in the same situation as Halaholo just over a year ago and now has three tries in eight matches for Wales and has been one of the standout performers in Welsh rugby. But what does our coach of the Cardiff Blues have to say about all this? Let's have a listen right now. He showed his class last week, but again for him. Um, if he wants to, he wants to progress his career. Obviously, he's one of our time servers, so he's got an, an eye on a red jersey later on in his career. Hopefully, it comes sooner than later. Uh, so he needs to go back to back this week as well. Yeah, after the next World Cup, he'll qualify for Wales in residency. Do you feel he's he's got the ability to step up to the top level? I think if he plays with that intensity as he did last week and that desire and hunger in his preparation. You know, there's, he's probably one of the he's one of the form centres in Wales at the moment. He's probably one of the better ones because he's got he's so dangerous with the ball. Um, he's a really good defender as well. So at the moment, if he, once he puts it together, he's you know he's a complete player. He showed his so there you go. Those are the thoughts of the Blues head coach. Let's have a look at some examples from other nations in the, the Northern Hemisphere. We'll start with Ireland with Bundiaki, the centre, of course. He has been fantastic for Connacht and then was called up to the Ireland squad. So he's one example. First, as I've already mentioned, Hadley Parks plays for the Scarlets and has played very well for Wales. Nathan Hughes at England, born in Fiji, eligible to play for Samoa as well, but decided to play for England. And he's breaking into that team and he's a very good number eight. Mako and Billy Vunapola, one born in Samoa, one born in New Zealand, um, had um, Samoan, Fijian and Tongan heritage, but lived in Wales for a bit and now they play for England after spending more than three years there. And then Tim Visser for Scotland was born in the Netherlands, but decided to play for Scotland. He is now retired from international rugby. But I think the big question we have to ask is why do these players want to play for our nation? Now you could ask things like Tim Visser playing for the Netherlands is not a high level of rugby and he wants to play at the highest level, play in World Cups. The Netherlands are not going to qualify for a World Cup anytime soon, while Scotland are certain to qualify. But then you look at players like Bundiaki, like um, Halaholo. Is it the fact that they're just simply not good enough for New Zealand and they think that they're good enough for Wales? Or is it that because they're playing in the Northern Hemisphere, they cannot be picked for New Zealand because the seasons are different, the timing of the seasons? What is it? And I think we have to be serious about this, that sometimes if we do pick these players, 
we are going to miss out on the young generation of Welsh players coming through. Players, as I've said, such as Owen Watkins, coming through now. And if Halla Hollow gets in at 28 years old, is he going to take that two crucial years off Watkins, who's only 21 right now and is an exciting prospect for Welsh rugby? But what do you guys think? And let me know in the comments below, should he be allowed to play for Wales? It's a big question. We've said yes to Hadley Parks. Should there be a cap on the amount of players you can have in your team? It's a question that we need to ask. But guys, again, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe, like and share the video. Take care.